Hello and welcome back to your own channel Indian Defense Analysis where we bring to you all the latest development happening in the defense sector. The aerospace sector is highly technology intensive space which involves the development of next generation composite material, advanced metallurgy for engines, sophisticated radars and many more. At the same time, it cannot compromise on product integrity and should be highly reliable with zero defect. India has lot to catch up in this space. At present, the Defence PSU HAL has extensive experience in aircraft development and manufacturing, which mainly caters to the demands of Indian Armed Forces with limited export reach. Domestic demands will not be able to provide economies of scale to make profitable investments and sustain the production line. India has to look aggressively towards the defence export. The government is making efforts to take domestic defence production from the current $12 billion to $22 billion by 2025. Government has also started pushing for defence export with the target of exporting $5 billion by the year 2025. India has achieved export of defence items and technologies worth Rs 13,000 crore in the financial year 2021, which is likely to rise to 17,000 crore in the financial year 2022. Defence export has grew by 334% in the last five years and India is now exporting to over 75 countries. However, the export mainly involves Brahmos missile, Pinaka MBRL, artilleries, anti-tank guided munitions and other ammunitions. India has not recently backed a significant export order of aircrafts or helicopters. What India needs is an export-focused agency such as Ross Bond Export of Russia dealing with export and import of defense-related products, services and technologies. Apart from HL, TASL that is Tata Advanced Systems Limited is the only private sector company with vast experience in aerospace manufacturing. This is possible because the firm has collaborated with US aerospace giants such as Airbus, Boeing and Lockheed Martin for building various parts of the aerostructures. TSL also has agreement with GE to manufacture parts of the LEAP engines. These engines are used in most of the commercial airliners across the world. Few examples are Airbus A320neo, the Boeing 737 MAX and COMAX C919. The TASL and Airbus collaboration for the development of C295 aircraft has been a major success as 95% of the components of the aircraft will be manufactured by TASL in India. TASL is also manufacturing aerostructure for Sukhoski S92 helicopters, C-130J Hercules transport aircraft, Pilotus PC-12NG, wings for F-16 and airframes for AH-64 Apache attack helicopters. However, the need is to involve more and more private entities which can place India at the center of the map of aerospace manufacturing, increasing competition and driving innovation. Now, as reported few days back, India has negotiated for the local assembly of uh, MQ-9B C or Sky Guardian remotely piloted aircraft or RPs. The Navy chief has told that at least 60% of the quantity of aircraft that will be ordered for procurement will be manufactured in India. A tri services case for the procurement of 13 MQ-9B from US under government to government foreign military sales route is under process at an estimated cost of $3 billion. Acceptance of necessity for the same is expected in some time. The Navy chief also said that US government has agreed to set up MRO that is maintenance, repair and overhaul facility for Sea Guardians in India. Besides, the MRO would be a Sea Guardian global sustainment hub where this system from any country would be serviced. Now, for the local manufacturing, General Atomics, the firm which is the manufacturer of MQ-9 RPAs, will need an Indian partner. As per latest reports, General Atomics has announced its partnership with Bharat Forge. Vivek Lal, the chief executive of General Atomics Global Corporation has said, GA ASI is eagerly looking forward to working with Bharat Forge in the critical field of aerostructure manufacturing. 
This means that Bharat Forge is going to be the manufacturing partner for MQ-9 RPS in India for armed forces once the agreement is signed. Now, this is a very significant move for India, which has been struggling for decades to field an operational high endurance or medium endurance UAV, which we call it male or hail UAV. It will also set up manufacturing ecosystem for high-end RPS. Entrance of Bharat Forge into aerospace sector is good news. The firm has already set up itself as a global leader in forging and development of range of artilleries from towed to self-propelled ones. As a part of mq 90 India has also planned for transfer of certain niche technologies to DRDO required for indigenous design and development of hail RPS. Bharat Forge can also play an important role with DRDO for development of the future male or hail RPS. This was today's update. Please let us know your views on this in comment section. If you like the video, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. With this, I would like to say goodbye and Jai Hind. We'll soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in the defense sector.